Hey, welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. And today we're back at Cala County College where I've got Bob Moffitt, the head instructor of the school. Now we're doing some pipeline style welding. We're going to be using some processes that I'm not terribly familiar with. So I have solicited Bob's help in this. And we're going to be welding uh, some type of a steel pipe here. So uh, Bob, what, what diameter is this? This is uh, eight inch standard wall thickness of carbon steel pipe. Okay, now where would this be used in the industry? This would be used in refineries, predominantly. This particular process and procedure would be used in petrochemical. Okay, so your curriculum teaches this on a standard basis? Yes. Okay, well I notice you've got a big gap in here, and we're getting ready to do a root pass. And the root pass, is not TIG, is that correct? That is correct. We're not, we're, we're, we're deviating from the standard TIG today. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really jumping into the abyss here, so I, I'm going to ask you, what are you going to use for a root pass? We are going to use a short circuiting ER70 S6 035 diameter wire. Okay. Uh, 7525 gas, okay. just like we would use on carbon steel. Uh, for structural welding, but today we're going to use it on pipe. Okay, now that's 75-25, is that 75% argon? 75 argon, 25% CO2, standard gas Okay. for short circuiting, and uh, that gas runs with uh, uh, flux core wires as well. All right. Well, we're going we're to do this in two parts. Is that correct? You do a, a root pass, and then you're going to come along and do a, a fill or a cap pass? Yes. The uh, procedure is written a long time ago. Um, I have some background in this particular process when I was contracting for Conoco. Um, we would do a lot of uh, prefab in shop welding to knock out flanges to elbows, short pups, anything that we could roll, anything that we could position because the speed is so much faster than trying to fit this up in the field. You know, we're using a, a wire process, which is way faster than stick welding. So, I noticed it's got quite a gap to it. It's been pre-tacked. It looks like in about three places. Mm -hmm. Is that is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is that normal? Uh, three and four. I, I've left a section open here because I'm not going to start on this tack. If I did start on it, it would probably shrink, and I would lose my gap, and then I wouldn't get my necessary penetration. Okay, so so what is your average gap right here? Five thirty seconds. Okay. Three sixteenths. All right. Now I notice there's a little bit of a chamfer to it. Standard bevel is uh, in the piping industry for for piping is thirty seven and a half degrees plus or minus two and a half. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> what do you do now? You just get get your gear on, get ready. You've got a a, a travel speed set up here. I've got a travel speed set. I may be adjusting it as I'm welding. Essentially. The way this works, uh, it's it's really quite simple. We're using the positioner to travel. My gun is going to be stationary over here at about 10:30, 11 o'clock, and the pipe's going to be turning away from me. Okay. So it's a you know a nickname is a, a rollout weld. All right. Uh, they're really kind of fun to do when you have everything set correctly, and everything is you can just fly through these welds. All right. Um, you know again. We are attempting to get 100% root fusion on the inside of the pipe. I may have to stop and feather some edges, starts and stops on these tacks. Um, we try to minimize our, our starts and stops. An option would be to put four large tacks in here, and when I say large, inch and a half, so that this thing doesn't move. Uh, if I grind them out real thin, and I weld through them, sometimes I can get some shrinkage and closure. So by the time I end this weld, I'm, it may be too tight and I wouldn't get my, my uh, root fusion on the inside. Right. We're, trying to, we're trying to get some reinforcement drawn to the inside, just like we did with the TIG, feeding the, feeding the wire to the inside. We're trying to get the exact same thing. We want a little bit of reinforcement because when we put the second pass in, we're gonna be welding pretty hot uh, about 26 volts, and uh, I've got my wire feed speed set around 400 on this particular machine, and I didn't read the amperage. Somebody might read that for me. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to guess it's over over 260 on the amperage. So that's so, pretty hot, you know. And we're we're going to we're going to be melting. You know, if you film this from the inside on the second pass, that root pass would be getting cherry red on the inside, but we're not melting it to restructure it. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're the point is we're we're welding nice and hot, and that's to fill it up, and then we'll put one more pass on there for our cap. Okay. So this segment is just the root pass. Now, how long does that take? Once you get all set up, get your gear on, pull the trigger, how long will it be till we're finished with that root pass? We can time it. Uh, if I stop and and grind my tacks ahead of my um, ahead of myself. I'm going to guess and say we can have this root pass in in less than five minutes. Great. Great. Well, let's... And, and if I, you know, if I went ahead and ground all of these tacks and just made a continuous weld and trusted that they would fuse in, um, probably less than that. Well, Bob, I'm your student, so uh, let's get our gear on and uh, show me what to do. Yeah. started this root pass here with this big gap as you call it and I am welding over here about 10 o'clock on this groove as it's turning away from me and really all I want to do is keep the wire on the leading edge of the pool to kind of keep that up underneath the pool fuse into both side walls in order to get my necessary reinforcement on the inside of the pipe. Looks like I might be losing a little bit of my, my ground here the way this is fluttering. His penetration looks good. If I hold it in the pool here, I'm coming up on a tack that I've already feathered out. I'm running over the top of it. Now I'll just jump down on the leading edge of it. If I do this correctly, I stay in the pool, I don't have a problem. If I slip, then my wire shoots into dead air space. And then if I just keep pulling the trigger and it leaves a piece of wire on the inside of the pipe and that's not good. The one thing I have done that's a little different is I'm running a nozzle here that has a, a diffuser and, and the nozzle is uh, a slip nozzle, it's not a thread on nozzle, which allows me to stick the contact tip out a little further past the nozzle. Yeah, I noticed that. Since I'm reaching up inside this groove, it allows me to maintain the good short arc settings without suffering too long of an electrical stick up. Just right, and this weld goes in. You can almost lay the, you can almost lay the nozzle in the in the groove and walk the cut down here as just sliding away from it.
Well, Bob, it really looks good in here, and I was timing your weld in roughly three, three and a half minutes, start to finish. Uh, and I, I could hear where you went over your tacks, but uh, this root pass looks fantastic. Now, question I've got for you, can you tell me what your settings were as far as voltage and wire speed and things like that? Uh, my volts on this particular machine were at 18.2, and okay. my wire feed speed was set at uh, 225, and digital control, I don't know what the amperage, I'm thinking it was around 125 amps. Okay. Now, what happens if you have a flaw of some sort? Let's say you didn't penetrate, and you had a, a, a one-inch area that just didn't penetrate. How would you repair that? Okay. Um, good that you brought up the one-inch area. I'm really only allowed... Uh, less than an eighth of an inch. So if I have a sidewall that's not fused, uh, first thing I need to do is probably look at it. Uh, if this if this is an open pipe and we can see inside it pretty easily, if this was a flange and an elbow, uh, I'd only be able to see one part of the backside of the elbow. I wouldn't be able to see this inside part. So I would need to probably leave myself a window in here and take the light and look in here and make sure that I have fused all of my inside edges where my tacks were. Now, if I missed one, uh, I would take the light and, and see where it's at, and I would put a, a, a chalk mark out here with soapstone, okay. and I would take a thin bladed grinder, an eighth inch grinder, and I would start thinning that weld metal down and also rebeveling it in that area. And I would probably do that a good inch on either side of the of the suspected void. Okay, so when you're, when you're grinding, you, do you try to, to punch all the way through? No, in the prep not necessarily. Just when kind you're, of round when it you're out? grinding, it, you know, you, you can run parts with a grinder. A lot of people don't understand that. I've seen, I've seen people take a thin bladed grinder and they just grind right straight through this. Think about that for a second. All you're doing is putting a great big old thick root face on your pipe. Okay. You're not going to be able to fuse. Now, you know, you've just created a worse situation. Plus, if you grind all the way through your piece of pipe, even if you're rebeveling, a lot of times you leave some little razor-thin burrs on the inside because we've actually welded over them after we've punched through and grounded through. We've welded through them. You shoot an x-ray of that. Your reinforcement looks fine, but now you have two razor blades lined up on your... Okay. On your weld, you well, left you so left what, the burr edges. What you're describing there. is it's not just welding. When you go to repair this, there's quite an art to it. Grinding it out and, and just doing you, it over and over, you, and I'm sure you, it helps you, a lot. You need to be your own inspector. You need to you need to understand the code, the procedure. You need to you need to know how to work with your tools to fix. You know, you need to be able to make repairs too. So. Okay. Uh, let's say that we had a void right here where I start and stop. Um, I would take, you know, that's obvious where I stop. Uh, I would take the thin bladed grinder. I would start and thin this out, and then I would start tilting the grinder blade back and forth. And if you watch this carefully, uh, you, you know when you're getting down there real thin, but it'll actually change colors like it'll turn blue from being hot. Okay. Also, if, if I suspected that, um, uh, let's say that I ran out of gas and I had some uh, pockets of porosity, let's say I had a couple of them showing, but I also suspect some somewhere up in the bead somewhere, or even after a finished weld, I can go in here with a grinder, and if I do this correctly, I can just start shaving off uh, thin layers of weld metal with the grinder until I find that suspected pocket of porosity and I can grind that part out and re-weld it. Okay. Well, this is part one of two. This is the root pass. And uh, we're going uh, to do a little cleanup here uh, where not Bob is. <laughs> and I want to thank uh, Bob Moffitt for volunteering to do this. This concludes part one of two. I want to thank you for watching Take Time. I'm Mr. Tig. <laughs>